Good afternoon, everyone. It's our immense pleasure to welcome Dr. Prajit KK with us. Sir is senior scientist, ICR Center Insure Fisheries. And the topic today, uh, our esteemed guest is uh, has chosen is pots and traps for energy efficient and responsible fishing. Uh, I welcome, sir, and uh, I welcome you all again for the third session. So you are audible as well as visible. The session recording has started and the presentation is also visible. Please start, sir. OK, thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, so I think this is the last session of this course. So I think last uh, 20 days, you are saturated with uh, lots of topics related to fish, fisheries and uh, fishing technology. So today, the topic is related with the traps and ports specific that uh, ports and traps for energy efficient and responsible fish directly going to the presentation. So we know in aquatic ecosystem, the humans are uh, interacting in different ways. So that create a lot of uh, positive as well as negative impact, like the pollution, then habitat disturbance, you know, the fishing, in the case of fishing, uh, mainly in the, uh, like the troll, the troll fishing and all the habitat disturbance is taking place. Then in, in the case of aquaculture, there is a chance of in, uh, invasive species, the introduction of species from other region. And definitely there's some climate change and the, and the, one of the most important human interaction with the aquatic system is by means of fishing. So coming to the fishing, you know, fishing is an ancient practice from the long back it started. It's included all the elements of searching, hunting and capture of a fish. So uh, there are wide varieties of craft and gears are involved in the capture of the fishes. So uh, you may be aware that in the previous presentation, we discussed different types of craft and gears. So in general, it is generally classified into the active gears and passive gears. As the name indicates, the active gears are the actively operated and the passive gears are the passively operated. So the energy utilization in the active fishing gear will be more when compared to the passive fishing gear. So definitely for a uh, use of a gear, the need a platform. So that is the craft, the, the craft diversity or the distribution of craft or structure of the craft is differs regionally and also Gear, gear specific, that some of the crafts are gear specific. So it's regionally and locally, this structure is also differs. So coming to the problem associated with the fishing, there are different types of problem, mainly something ecological issues and operational issues and the resulted economic issues. The ecological issues we can see when we are looking into the uh, fishing, some active fishing like uh, trawling and all, we can see uh, the problems like juvenile fishing by catch. This is so more one of the um, most common discussed uh, topic in the uh, fishing means in the trawl fishery and uh, uh, that that's some of the ecological issues then operational issues we know the energy utilization of use of energy any food production system that's that's requires some energy for the production that's in, in the case of fishing or the fisheries that's it is a highly energy consuming process so day by day our uh, fuel price is increasing that especially the fossil fuel so we have to, there's a issues like operational issues also. So the resulted economic issue will be there. If you are not getting any catch utilized, I mean, uh, by spending that much energy or fuel, if you're not getting any uh, catch, that will be resulting in a lot of economic direct and indirect issues. So the catching a fish, we are using a gear. I already told different types of gear. So a gear should be ideal. According to the code of conduct, it's responsible fishing, fisheries, there are some uh, criteria required for a uh, ideal fishing gear. First and foremost one is it should be highly selective. Selective means you are, if you are targeting a specific fish group, for example, if you are targeting tuna, our net will be full of tuna. It is like that, highly selective. Then it should it should have a ne 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 negligible direct and indirect impact on the non-targeted species and also the habitat. If you are see, looking into the trawl fishing, uh, but while we are targeting a single species, the number of species are uh, get harmed or destroyed, especially the ecosystem is also get disturbed. So that is the second factor. Then third one is the, it should be effective and it should give high catch with the lowest possible cost. With the lowest invest investment, we have to get an effective and then we have to catch the fish very effectively and the catch will be catch it also need to be very high then the quality of the fish also should be 
the, and then coming with the quality aspect, the quality should be very high. So the, these are some of the major characteristic characters or factors which make a fishing gear ideal. So by analyzing all the active and passive fishing gear, we are which all the uh, gears are ideal. Whether any any of the gear satisfy the criteria required for ideal fishing gear, you can see a lot of gears. But we are examining each and every gear. We can we, we will understand that there is there is no gear we can call it as an ideal. Actually, this is only a concept. There is no gear uh, we can call it as an ideal fishing gear. But if you are analyzing one by one each and every parameters or uh, factors required for ideal gear, the traps are the fishing gears which satisfy most of the criteria required for an ideal fishing gear. So if you are selective, that, that will, we will be discussing what are the positive aspects of a trap. Okay. While we are telling that term trap, normally what we are coming in our mind is uh, maybe some mouse trap or rat trap we are using in our home. The principle is we are uh, uh, keeping some edible thing inside the trap and attracting the animal into the trap and it got trapped. That is a simple mechanism. The so similar in the case of fish traps, what we are making is it's a simple, this is a simple and passive fishing gear which allow the entry of the fishes, but the uh, coming back or retrieval may be difficult. But this is made by the means of putting some chambers or some uh, a division or something like that. So uh, it's a having a funnel like structure. Uh, the entrance will be some, some normally it's a funnel like structure. So it, it makes the entrance easy and the outward movement will be difficult. So in, if you are going to some foreign journal or any uh, 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 international journal, you can see the usage like a ports and traps. So what is the difference between a port and what is the difference? Between, what, what are the difference between a port and trap? We can, in general, according to FA, we can tell that the traps are the large structure fixed on the shore or in any intertidal region. For example, a bag net. Bag net is operating on the shore or an intertidal region where the wave action is very high. So this uh, uh, that big bulky structure is called traps. Whereas ports are the small structures which are movable. You can take from one location to another, and it is a basket-like structure, basket or box-like structure, and deployed from a craft or even from a shore. If we have sufficient depth, we can operate from the shore, shore also. So in general, in, in Indian context, what we are using is actually a port, but we don't have that terminology using port. Everywhere we are using the term trap. So that is the difference between the ports and traps. So what are the benefits? What make uh, traps uh, advantage, uh, advantage of trap? That make, uh, I mean, why the traps stand upper uh, level in, when we are considering the energy efficiency, that kind of operational easiness, that kind of thing. These are the fact benefits of trap. Trap is an economic and low energy um, uh, gear uh, that uh, 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 when compared to the active fishing gear. So uh, we can, uh, there is no uh, uh, need of higher investment for the money and the energy. So uh, it is a highly energy efficient, both in the case of return, cat, catch and the operational aspects. Then another thing, one of the important is the quality or the uh, nature of the catch. You can see the catch inside the trap is always in the live condition or undamaged, it's a fresh. Then we no need of uh, the care of the uh, gear. No need to listen. Uh, I mean, uh, we can put the trap in a location, and that continuous monitoring is not required. Only periodical attention is only needed. Then capital investment for the harvest for the fabrication of the trap. The investment need for the fabrication is comparatively relatively low when comparing to the other larger fishing gear. So the selectivity is another factor. We can we can decide what kind of fish we need. If you are giving the entrance in a bigger size, that the bigger fishes will only, I mean, we can harvest the bigger fish. If we are reducing that uh, funnel or an entrance, the selectivity, that size selectivity, we can, also the species selectivity, we can decide by using suitable bait or structure of uh, trap, something like that. Then if unfavorable conditions are there, we can leave our uh, system or uh, leave our gear in the aquatic environment itself. But uh, sometimes it, if the, uh, there is a chance for other some problems like ghost fishing, you know, we can discuss that later. 
the types of traps, uh, fish traps, we can broadly classify it, very broadly classified into two categories. Another is the one is the marine and inland sector based on the water body we are used. First is the marine traps and inland traps, and the second one is the traditional traps and modern traps. In India, mostly we are using the traditional traps, and the modern traps may be by the intervention from some institutes like CIFT or uh, some fisher, interested fishermen may know some friends from the uh, other countries, like mainly from the Middle East. So the, from their own interest, they may be fabricating and operating in some pockets of the country. So that's the only uh, modern traps operating in the country. So coming to the types of traps, we can see different types of trap. I will quickly go through uh, how, I mean, what all the types of uh, traps operating in Indian waters or in Indian uh, in, in inland and the marine sector. First is the screen barrier. You can see here one uh, in river, a fence-like uh, fence -like structure or uh, uh, constructed with the stones and uh, wood, you can see. So here, what is the traps act as an obstacle for the fish movement? So sometimes physically constructed dams, fences, nets act as a barrier. And it may or may not be closed by the fisher, uh, by the entry of the fishes. And uh, it is mainly sometimes it is using, I mean, fabricated with a net, bamboo, barrier, etc. This is a view from Gujarat, it is broccoli known as Vada. Another is habitat trap. Habitat traps means some fishes has a habit of hiding into some crevices, cracks, or uh, some uh, structures. So we are utilizing that behavior, especially in the case of octopus. Octopus, you can see, they have a hiding behavior inside the pit or holes. So a port kind of structure, if you are uh, deploying in the habitat in the ha habitat of a, uh, octopus, it will automatically go inside and get trapped. So habitat, uh, octopus port is an example for a habitat trap. Then tubular trap, this is uh, from the northeast, actually you can see, uh, mainly for ca catching eels, that's tube like structure or uh, snake like fishes. It, the one area is broad and fishes will uh, move to this narrow side and they were captured. This is a tubular trap. Then mechanically operated traps will be there. This is as, as the name indicates, once the fish entered into this, the fisherman will closely, mechanically, mechanically, forcefully close the net or a traps. So it will go in trap. This is a mechanically operated trap. Then another is the basket type trap. Uh, this is the most of the advanced traps, the designs are the modification of the basket type traps. So this is uh, some, this is also again from uh, Northeast. So this is made with some wood, bamboo, plants, plant leaves, plastic, metals, etc. So some most of, as I told, the most of the modern uh, devices, trapping devices, are the modification of this kind of traps. So coming to another chapter is the uh, box type trap. As the name indicates, this is the box type type. Uh, so the, there will be some uh, funnel, maybe round or a vertical kind of a funnel. So entrance will be there. So fishes will be moving there. This is also depend on the availability of material, something bamboo, mainly for catching metroplus, uh, uh, then crabs and definitely species, rackish water. And filter trap, filter trap, just like our fencing kind of trap, it, it is, it, it allow the movement of water to a filter, like a, I mean, a uh, sieve-like structure, it's a trap. So all the, whatever the fishes or aquatic animals, uh, coming with this water current will be get harvested inside the trap. This is that structure uh, in, for, again from Gujarat. You can see um, instead of bamboo here, they are simply using mosquito net and all the whatever the fishes coming with the path, uh, coming with the water flow, they have to go to harvesting. These are different types of large, medium uh, harvesting structures. Then you can see some filter, another type of filter, uh, filter trap that apron kind of one. This is in from the Kerala. You can see this is a wide opening. It is there. It is normally operated uh, opposite to the water current. So water will be move. Water will be moving like this, and all the catch will be concentrated in the end of the uh, trap. Aerial trap. Again, this is uh, utilizing another behavior of the fishes. Some fishes tend to move, jump out of water. So there will be some structures which fixed outside the water. So one uh, some water uh, some some agitation or a movement will be created in the water. So as a result, this uh, fishes tend to jump out of the water. So we are uh, harvesting using suitable devices. This, this is mainly for harvesting milk fish and that kind of jumping behavior, fishes that may exhibit jumping behavior. Uh, this is normally uh, used in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra. 
another is the basket kind of you can see different this is a various different variations are operated in different pocket of the country uh, even in kerala northeast bengal you can see this, this actually uh, once we have spotted the spot the fish and simply we are putting that on the top of the animal and there will be an opening in the top and through that we are uh, hand picking it's a simple structure so targeted species there are different types of so in worldwide different uh, tropical temperate and cold water species are targeted using uh, traps so before starting operation of trap or uh, fabrication of trap we have to consider different uh, uh, parameters like uh, uh, what are the factors we need to consider while fabricating a trap first one is the cost of the material and fabrication charge it should be minimal because most most cases fishermen use whatever the material available in the local locally available material they are using so excuse me so locally available material they are using so uh, that can reduce the fabrication charge so it should be minimal then it should be durable uh, but we can consider the fabrication charge if the material is last for a long uh, like the uh, stainless steel we can use in some environment so if it's lasting uh, when compared to the other material if it is have a lesser life and uh, damage in a short period and another material is we can use for a long period uh, with a, a comparatively good investment we can go for that but uh, then uh, next is the dura durability to so durability it should be withstand with the physical thrust of uh, stress of the fishing environment just like in marine environment we can't use uh, some iron kind of thing that will lead to the rusting if the traps are of marine uh, same 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 thing what i have told the, the, it should be coated or treated with a suitable corrosion anti corrosion agents then use of uh, biodegradable material we can also use for uh, preventing the ghost fishing we will discussing ghost fishing in detail in the last session then design should be simple it should not be complex and the harvesting should be we can we, we can easily uh, harvest after that i mean once the fish is trapped if, if the design is simple only we can harvest it properly hmm, without any difficulty the stackability of the gear is very very important factor because one of the disadvantage of uh, trap is the stack uh, is very difficult i mean uh, bulkiness so stackability how how many numbers of uh, traps we can carry in a vessel or a boat or a uh, small craft that is the important thing just like if you if you can number of more traps just like uh, stacking our uh, glass one above another so that kind of a facility or a stability is there that is a considered as a good uh, positive aspect then design should be selected based on the biological characteristics of the targeted species like the morphology feeding swimming behavior the ecological niche etc for example the carnivorous fish we need to suitable bait then uh, for uh, shrimps or uh, uh, lobster we need to another design okay so now we have fabricated the consider the factors uh, need uh, uh, considered while fabricating now we can see the what are the typical parts of a trap a fishing trap there will be a main ribs you can here you can see thick kind of structure that is called main ribs main frame or skeleton this normally this should be very strong if you here you can see one two three four ribs then there will be an outer covering normally it will be sometime if you are traditionally preparing maybe some palm leaves or some veg vegetative material if it's a modern fish trap it will be with us some synthetic material or a stainless steel or metal that is the outer covering then another is the funnel entrance funnel or entrance this is the main one of the important part that beside the uh, catchability you can see this is the funnel where the fishes enter into the trap then door there will be a door here in the upper part you can see a door that's mainly to collect the harvest because what all the fishes uh, caught in in our uh, trap we can simply put the hand and uh, can harvest through the door then there is in modern trap that's a that's a conservation or a, that's a technological aspect to reduce the juvenile gap we can see the escapement gap here this is a typical uh, modern uh, lobster trap if juvenile lobsters are caught inside the trap it can easily go out of this trap so this is escapement trap we say uh, another structure we have to provide in a trap then baiting area there will be some inside there will be a suitable baiting area for hanging the bait then ballast ballast means this is a hard structure normally attached to the base of a trap 
this is mainly to fix the or uh, increase the uh, weight of the track actually uh, it normally some stones or uh, uh, sand filled bags or uh, metal itself will be using on the top of I'm sorry bottom of the uh, track track as it just to increase the heaviness then coming to the operational aspects of the trap before operating that we have to know some basic uh, we know some some factors we have to keep some factors in mind then type of fish we want to catch and the type of uh, pools and trap catch them for example as i told different species have uh, um, i mean we for catching different uh, animal we are using different traps so we have to what kind of fish we have to harvest that should be keep in mind for harvesting trap the structure will be different for harvesting lobster that will be different so that uh, so that need to be considered the type of bait for example bait we will be discussing separately so bait also we need to fix what type of bait we use then suitable landing and storage of catch on board because most of the time our catch will be in live condition for if we are maintaining the catch as such in a live condition our price will be the, the price will be high uh, whatever the, uh, for always for fresh fish we are getting a premium price so, so that kind of a uh, facility is required in the on board or whether in the small craft then market of it for anything even it is agriculture we have to so in the uh, even in the case of agriculture also we have to uh, see the market for our catch uh, uh, so before uh, venturing to the uh, uh, i mean fishing we have to see whether the suitable market is available or not then operation this is our own pictures we have uh, uh, we have uh, conducted a series of experiment in of gujarat so you can see the operation of uh, uh, traps can do it from any class of uh, vessels and if uh, either we can operate with uh, manually or with uh, some improved uh, uh, devices like uh, power winches or rollers etc so uh, traps can set up any time whether in um, daytime or uh, night any time you can set up so there will be something boy kind of thing and a rope will be there and uh, that is attached to the our trap so uh, that mainly helps to locate where our trap is so uh, proper rigging is essential we need to tie it properly tie the um, way i mean float and uh, accessories then normally the size uh, one and a half if the depth is uh, uh, based on the depth, depth of our uh, operation uh, operation site we will be deciding the uh, length of this rope sometimes it is uh, one and a half uh, one and a half times or uh, sometimes it is double uh, than the depth of the water Body. then uh, to identification you can see this is uh, some flags you can provide or uh, even some reflectors also attaching in some uh, advanced uh, trap operation sites here here we have what what we have used is uh, simply flag we have attached just to identify this in this location we have deployed our trap then uh, coming to the bait we can operate a trap with bait or without bait uh, in, in the case of habitat trap as i already discussed in the case of uh, uh, habitat trap that is uh, octopus trap in that kind of trap we are not using any bait uh, in other traps we are using suitable baits then uh, funnel shape and the position of the bait is also very important the center of the trap is mainly preferred for the attachment of bait uh, once the, that uh, position that can uh, Fisher, fishermen can uh, fix uh, by doing the trial and error method uh, by a series of uh, trial and error method you can fix there is no definite uh, location or place for a, you have to place the bait uh, in a specific location something like that so depending upon the targeted species we can use different types of bait like a uh, waste from poultry slaughterhouse then uh, fish and shrimp waste also we can use mollusk can meat we can use wheat flour mix etc we can use then quality of a bait it should be withstand in the uh, aquatic environment for a long time then uh, availability then uh, low it should be uh, the cost should, should be low and uh, the that are the some some of the uh, some of the uh, aspects we are considering while selecting the bait 
uh, then uh, soaking time depends upon the targeted species. Sometimes the soaking time will be for a few minutes, and uh, sometimes it will be some two three days. But ideally, it is uh, 12 to 24 hours soaking time is ideal actually. Then uh, after the soaking, uh, once catch is there, I mean trapped, we can take it back to the uh, vessel or on board, and we can collect the catch and rebite and uh, again put in the water for the next trip. So that are the aspects of uh, uh, trap uh, process behind that uh, trap installation and trap fishing. Then coming to the trap fishing in India, uh, in uh, uh, inland waters we can see a uh, number of traps, varieties of traps and diversity of traps uh, operating. But in marine sector, the operation of trap is confined to only the Tamil Nadu coast actually. In this stretch we can only see the operation of trap. So, just, just now most of these slides are pictures only so I am fast, uh, we can just have a look. If you here you can see the trap design from the Tamil Nadu coast. This is used in the marine sector, various types of traps. Uh, nowadays uh, they are shifting to from uh, traditional material to the synthetic material. Plastic is using, PVC is using, high density polyethylene using, then uh, even metal is using as a frame. So here you can see one small boat loaded with uh, traps. This is a ballast actually. You can see the bag, bag uh, filled with uh, sand uh, just to keep the traps in the bottom of the sea. This is a typical catch. You can see the what type of catch is getting. Mainly the uh, fishes associated with the reef ecosystem. Sometimes, uh, many, many times, it, it is uh, the uh, ornamental fishes also getting. Then coming to the initiative from our own institute, we have started way long back in the uh, 80s. Uh, you can some, see some old photos. Uh, this is a catamaran used for the deploying the uh, traps. This is the traditional fisherman with a trap. So CFT has introduced, they have shown that structure uh, of a lobster trap. This is a typical structure of a CFT lobster trap. This is a catch. You can see that taking the measurement, this is a, our own previous DDG madam, Meena Kumari, she is taking the measurement of a, a trap long back in the 80s. Then you can see the uh, some of the commonly used bait in that time, sea urchin using mussels, parna. This is the uh, traditional and the CFT trap fisherman showing. This is a typical structure of a trap. You can see the structural details. This is how the trap is fabricating. First, uh, uh, simply we are fabricating that uh, metallic uh, frame. After that, it is coating with uh, plastic to reduce corrosion. See, different different parts it is preparing. As uh, assembling, fixing the lid. This is the final structure. And after fabrication, it is given to various locations in the country, mainly to the Tamil Nadu. You can see. Uh, in Lakshadweep, it is given, Nagapattanam. And then another is the collapsible fish trap from our side. You can see the collapsible, this is a uh, design for the uh, inland waters, mainly for the harvesting that uh, uh, pearl sport or lujanus, crab, etc. This is some of the photographs from Gujarat, but we have, we have compared different types of uh, ports and traps, uh, the various design we have compared. This is a typical catch. Again, you can see, and if you are analyzing the catch composition, you can see uh, mainly demersal fishes. You can see associated with the reef ecosystem or uh, uh, benthic ecosystem. You can see even some beautiful ornamental fishes are also we got as catch. The demersal fishes. Then advantages already we have discussed, but all the, I told the ideal fishing. There is no concept called ideal fishing here. Every gear has their own advantages and disadvantages. Then advantage we have discussed in very detail, like uh, we can release the capture, uh, which is fresh in condition, low economic, uh, low economic and low energy is required for the operation. Then uh, size and species selectivity. Then you can left in the sea whenever uh, in unfavorable condition. Then uh, there is no much attention. These are some of the positive aspects, but definitely there is some disadvantage also. We can see what all the disadvantage of trap fishing. As I told, trap is 
very bulky some some of the designs are very bulky so we, it occupies some of the considerable space in our vessel so handling is very really, very really prob problem so the handling is difficult and uh, manual hauling is very hard actually the last and last two weeks we are uh, in a, with another trial actually uh, i'm personally going for uh, monitoring this uh, this one so we we know uh, how difficult it is i mean uh, for that operation so uh, that is another aspect then uh, if the fish gear is loose due to some unfavorable condition like a uh, storm or uh, uh, there's a chance for losing the fishing gear like that will be happening some uh, some uh, climatic conditions will be there uh, so there is a chance for a uh, lost losing our fishing gear that will lead to the ghost fishing so ghost fishing you know what is the, you may be heard about the term ghost fishing that simply if you are discarded or uh, you lose the fishing gear to a location that will continuously uh, start to catch the fish so that will be leads to be destroying the our uh, biota or a uh, stock so it is not visible uh, simply it is happening in underwater that's why it is called a ghost as the ghost is not visible the process is just like a ghost i mean fishing is continuing that's why it is called as ghost fishing so the reason for the ghost fishing it may be bad weather condition then maybe gear conflict maybe in the case of gill net fishing the gear conflict is very high because if they are operating gill net in a specific area and the large uh, trawlers or uh, vessel or ship used to go in that path so that will be uh, leading to the uh, uh, i mean damage of the net that the, they are forcefully uh, forced to uh, they, they are forced to discard the net in the uh, environment itself fishing environment itself then physical condition of the fishing ground some uh, wind or a way i mean current will be there that kind of holds then uh, physical condition like uh, stones will be there some hard obstacles will be there that uh, that uh, that time also they also uh, that's a chance for losing the net so entangling of large marine animals like bait some shark or dolphin that also leads to the leads to the uh, ghost fish so there is a called uh, term called uh, aldfg that's called abandoned the lost or otherwise uh, discarded fishing gears then uh, that's continuously they can kill the uh, protected species like uh, uh, marine mammals sea turtles and sea birds etc and uh, uh, the sadly the traps and uh, gillnets are the Uh, structures which constitute which contribute more that aldf aldfg then harmful impact of the ghost fishing uh, as i told this uh, kill the targeted and non targeted organisms including endangered and protected species and this cause damage to the underwater habitats like the uh, coral reefs and benthic uh, fauna and also contributing to the marine pollution how best we can reduce what all the steps to prevent the ghost fishing in trap fishing we can uh, use proper ballast as i told the ballast is a hard structure that that make uh, heaviness that increase the heaviness of the trap so this is anchoring mechanism so we can use proper anchoring mechanism and it's always operate traps in try to operate uh, in good weather condition that is another aspect then uh, during unfavorable condition remove the traps from the fishing ground don't leave that even though that is considered as a positive aspect we, we better to don't leave in the fishing ground then select suitable site for uh, installation of trap like uh, it should be uh, easy to operate and uh, even ground then always provide escape vent for escaping mechanism in the fishing in the design we can use some uh, biodegradable material in some parts like that then use of uh, yes biodegradable mesh in the specific locations then the problem persists in uh, trap fishing in india uh, it is uh, highly regional you can see one by one highly regional and uh, it's operated mainly in the ecologically sensitive area especially in uh, tamil nadu region you can see uh, that mandapam area and all that is mainly ecologically sensitive area so operation is highly regional and it's in ecologically sensitive sensitive area and there is no much data base even if you are data, taking the fishing data of from other different fishing gear if you search for uh, uh, data from trap there will not be any available data so that data is uh, uh, deficient so uh, then uh, and another thing is in india the operation is mainly con confined to the 
not a single sector. There is no any modernization or a high level trapping is not there. Then uh, deployment and operation of traps are then mainly that in the case, in, as I thought, it's mainly confined to Tamil Nadu coast. What fisherman is doing is simply they are diving into the, even they are not using that float and drop kind of thing. Uh, they believe that if you are attaching that float and drop kind of thing, that will reduce the catch. Uh, they are make, telling that that makes some voice, noise or so, that kind of thing. So they are simply diving into the sea and uh, fixing in the water. So the safety and health issue of fishermen is another aspect. Then uh, there is no legal recommended framework, I mean recommended uh, mesh size for the craft fishing engine. In some, most of the countries it is there. And scientific design is also not there. For example, when that uh, escapement, juvenile escapement structure, that kind of structure is, I mean scientific designs are not uh, using then if you're removing traps is mainly as i told it is mainly uh, targeting some high bodied species like a uh, uh, carangnade or a snapper that kind of thing so the capture and removal of juveniles of that kind of fish in large number that will lead to the uh, i mean reduce the stock of the particular species ghost fishing we have already uh, discussed in detail and uh, lack of uh, advanced post service facility uh, and uh, there is a market tie-up that also needed. Then what we can do, we are coming to the end of the session, then what we can do in the way forward. We can do uh, introduction of advanced material and operational techniques need to be promote, promoted for the sustainability of the uh, fishery and to increase the catch efficiency. Some interventions like technological interventions, we can, uh, there are some designs uh, that giving promising results that can be adopted that, that is using in the uh, outside our country that 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 we can use in our waters that we can test then proper training and safety equipment distribution to the fishermen that will increase the safety uh, of the traditional fishermen engaged in the trap fishing then we can make an estimate there is no as uh, there is an estimate of how much trap exists in in our country in which location it is operating and how how many traps can operate in a specific location just like a carrying capacity study so uh, uh, that will be very useful then mesh size definitely there is, there is a recommended mesh size for uh, reducing the juvenile catch uh, so that is also another pro i mean uh, another suggestion we can put forward or uh, then awareness should be created among the fishers to problem of uh, uh, ghost fishing and design operational intervention can be required to reduce the deleterious effects of the ghost fishing uh, in traps, then a supply chain we can be told that there is a market tie up where supply chain can be uh, made with some uh, suitable suitable agencies like uh, uh, harvesting of live fish and we are transporting the live fish and it's directly marketing to some uh, big uh, companies or a uh, firm like uh, that can be increase the uh, profit or uh, of the fisherman. This much only so. We are promoting uh, energy efficient fishing system like uh, traps, uh, then passive fishing gear. So this year is uh, celebrating as International Year of Artisanal Fisheries and Aquaculture. So CIFT is also uh, engaged in promoting uh, energy efficient passive fishing gear both in inland and the uh, mechan uh, mechanized sector. So this much only from the uh, my session. So that's all. Thank you. Thanks for your attention. I think 15 minutes before I finish. Hello. If you have anything specific to the topic, you can ask.
any specific question something Thank you, sir. I think I question. Yeah, yeah, let's proceed to questions if there are any. Let me start the microphones. Please ask questions. Uh Sir, uh, myself, Kalair, son, how to differentiate a trap and a pot, sir? Uh, some uh, difficulties there, how to uh, define the pot and a trap? Uh, actually, uh, normally that terminology that I told actually, uh, normally fixed structures are called as trap, actually. What we are calling yes, as trap is actually port. Uh, normally, it will be fixed on the shore or an internal region. Uh, the traps just like a back net but trap can we can take from one sorry port we can take from one region to another it's a small basket kind of a structure so what we are using is actually port but we, we don't have the terminology like a port we are always using trap for all the structures okay okay, okay. thanks any any anyone else uh, for the question If there are any other queries, please ask. Mostly thank yous are there in chat. Dr. Ashwini Kumar has said thank you. Anybody else wants to ask a question or interact or uh, any any feedback? That would be welcome. You can ask. So, if there are no questions, uh, Jaya Kumari has a very good presentation. Thank you, Jaya. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. If there are no questions, we can consider the session to be over and. Uh, uh, on behalf of the participants and on behalf of the organizing committee, I would want to extend our heartfelt gratitude to you, sir, for being with us, for sharing uh, this uh, presentation with us. We look forward to uh, future uh, collaborations. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. So can I thank you. Up?